is a drug, uh, uh, it's a neurotransmitter, the inhibitory neurotransmitter that is occupying 30% of the synapses in our central nervous system 
and this was discovered in 1883, but its use came only in 1950s in a seminal news uh, uh, article in 1957 and 59, where they discovered it as eye protein in the gray fish. So we see 95 percent of the GABA is present in striatum. Uh, and next, uh, I'll just go through the. You know the synthesis of GABA. But I would just like to tell the irony of GABA, the most, uh, what do you say, the most inhibitory amino acid, the strongest inhibitory ex, uh, amino acid is prepared from glutamate, which is the excitatory amino acid, as you know. And it comes from glutamine, amine, uh, glutamine decarboxylase enzyme. And this is 2 times 65 and 67 with slight differences and they have a bearing in mind but I won't go into it in the so deep into the molecular basis. So there are GAD inhibitors and GAD effectors. So this are what affects the next you have to know how it is inhibited. The degradation of GABA comes through GABA transaminase. So we get it from the we get it from the Krebs cycle and it goes back into the Krebs cycle as succinate. Those are the final degradation. Now, GABA transaminase, as you know, we have learned, is inhibited by sodium malproate, vega bacteria, to some extent, ketamine. Then also, we should see there are the vesicle inhibitor and amino acid uh, transporters. Okay, that is at the level of the synaptic vesicle. And then down, if you would look, you would also see the GABA transporters, GAT. And there are four types of GABA transporters. One is one and four is in the synaptic, presynaptic membrane, and uh, the other two are present in the glial cell. And if you thought GABA is only acting. Uh, where does GABA act? It acts, oh, what are the drugs that act? Benzodiazepines, the, all your picrotoxin, all your anti-epileptics have a position there. All are inhalational and uh, some of the inhalation and many of the parental anesthetic agents, propofol and etomidate, the neuroactive steroids, all these are acting at the various parts, which are the inhibitory agents. So uh, we have uh, bicoclin, securinimine, metrazole, tetrazole, all these are, uh, are the agents that are inhibitory. Okay. Then I would just like to tell you that the benzodiazepines have anxiolytic and also induces amnesia that we are all aware and their action comes there. Also we should see in uh, when we talk the maximal uh, strength of GABA ergic transmission happens in the CNS and it's a strong reflex that pathway that is occurring and the action on the alcohol. Okay, alcohol is also very important. Now I, I shall just take you through these. GABA A, B, C receptors are there. These are the postsynaptic receptors. GABA A is having about 50 subtypes. There are about 50 subtypes for GABA and if you have the GABA B, it is metabotropic G protein coupled receptor, but the GABA A is a inotropic and affects the fluoride channel. And if you see GABA C is also inotropic and now we don't consider it as GABA C, it is considered as part one of the subtypes of the GABA A receptors. Okay, so this is uh, the newer trend that we see, and these are the uh, locations and the actions in the various parts that I have described in this diagram. Okay, now let us go to the positive allosteric modulators and the negative allosteric modulators. So that is the GABA A receptor that you are looking at, it's a pentameric one. And you have alpha, 2 alpha, 2 beta, 1 gamma or delta or pi. These are all written in Greek alphabets. And even in the alpha, you have alpha 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, beta, different numbers. 
and the conglomeration of these is what makes the uh, receptor give different sites of actions. Okay, this is what we have to know currently. According to the alpha, beta subtypes, there is the action happening. If you look at GABA, ether, GABA receptor, A receptor, there are two sites where GABA has to bind and that is only between alpha 1 and beta. There are two GABA molecules have to act for it to bind before the receptor is activated. And if you see the benzodiazepines, they will act at the benzodiazepine receptor and allow the GABA. So it is acting indirectly. It causes a allosteric modification for the GABA receptor. So it doesn't act directly. It's a modulator. Okay. Next, if you were to see barbiturates, they attack the different site. And so also the neuroactive steroids, you know, neurosteroids, the action of alcohol. Yes, all of these are located over here. Okay, so this is what I was saying. If there is no uh, benzodiazepine requires gamma and this part. If the gamma part is not there, you do not get the sedative action. And if there is alpha 1 binding, then you see that there is good anxiolytic activity or it's a, the newer benzodiazepines or non-benzodiazepines or the Z drugs, they are non-anxiolytic. Okay, so that is the point of difference. So that's why the diagram showed it clearly. And here also you can see where the picotoxin, picot uh, all these binding sites are seen. Okay, I'll just skip that. Uh, now, this is the difference between the action of benzodiazepines and barbiturates. Barbiturates, uh, benzodiazepines opens that chloride channel fast, rapid acting. It opens and allows the chloride to come in. Again, it opens and allows the chloride to come. It opens and allows the chloride to come in. These are fast, rapid open uh, opening of chloride channels that happens when you give benzodiazepines. This is the action. And if you look at here, barbidol, barbiturate, can you remember? When it is barbiturate, barbiturate holds the chloride channel open for a longer duration. So the door is kept open and I gave you a picture of that girl opening the door and keeping the door open for some time. And that is the chloride entry. So barbiturate holds the channel open for a longer duration. That's the two difference between GABA and GABA. Now, uh, this is the GABA B receptor, friends. And if you see the GABA B receptor, there are certain aspects of it. There are two types of GABA B, GABA B1 and B2. GABA B1, as you see to your left side, it is, uh, it is presynaptic in a location and what it does is it causes a calcium influx, influx, okay, while the GABA B2 is a postsynaptic uh, receptor and no line that binds to it so far there is allosteric modulation and what happens to GABA B2 is it causes a potassium efflux, okay, so these are the variations of GABA B that you should know. My slide is not up here. Correct. So this was GABA B1 and B2, right? Okay. Next we go to the receptors and their locations of GABA and how. See, I will just take the first point because we have no time. Elevation of anxiety fear. It's of inner fear. All that is located in your amygdala insula. And that is why it brings about good alleviation of anxiety, fear, all these disorders we can get. And if you see uh, down uh, when you have abuse potential, uh, take a look down at the abuse potential. Where is that? It's your mesolimbic system that is required for the reward pathway and your accumbens, mesoaccumbens. So ventral tegmental area and nucleus accumbens, these are the area where abuse potential arises. So that was one aspect which I would like to show you uh, that you need to know. And which are the drugs acting on uh, GABA? 
these are pico melon i'll take it individually this pico melon is no longer uh, being used because it has not cleared the fda because no one has bothered to submit it after clinical trials but this is a uh, showing good potential so if you want to do clinical trials and submit the paper you will be the uh, uh, franchisee of it okay uh, next i would like to tell you about the various other uh, newer drugs that are uh, these are not newer drugs but uh, what i am trying to tell you here is we are looking at quis college and then we will see about we are we can see about another agent that is there i will just show you the next yes quisqualam uh, quisqualamine uh, the slide is not changing ha ah, there yes okay and azopiclone okay mucimol mucimol is just a um, agent that is used in research from amanita muscaria only it has got more psychoactive actions right next yes okay uh, and then we come to the other newer drugs that are uh, you have to see allopregnanolone or exambolone hmm? this drug is a important agent that is used for preg uh, postpartum depression specifically used in postpartum depression right next postpartum depression then i will take you through another drug that is progabine and uh, uh, abacimanan this drug is mainly used for uh, uh, as you can see it is a beta carboline family okay next next i shall take you through the yes we are looking at another drug that is uh, this is also used uh, having progabine and the sl uh, molecule of it there is a number one i am not getting the next slide yes uh, that uh, that is also giving us some of the most importantly used uh, agents for convulsive as an anti convulsive okay now i will come to I will come to the other agents that are used, and that is, yes, abacinol, yes, progabalin, and coming to the next agent, progabide, uh, abacinolin, salicylate, uh, uh, basmith, mila, salicylate. Okay, this drug is very very important. As you can see, it can be a cognitive enhancement is done. no tropic in action and it can be given in cognitive impairment that comes with schizophrenia and in down syndrome so you see that we have so many drugs that have been coming our way but uh, the drugs that are these new drugs that i said have mentioned they are very very important and we come to the relevance of all the gaba you look at the types of uh, action wide range of therapeutic action as an anti anxiety of course in sedative and hypnotic in abuse in fact uh, baclofen with naltrexone has been tried even in two studies in india but they didn't, don't seem to be so favorable as a anti uh, uh, alcohol for alcohol deletion right so the, the catatonia such wide ranging effects are available with gaba so gaba is a molecule that we have to look to and understand and with this i take completion keeping in mind the shortness of time